Jose, do you have any complaints about that result? Is that a fair result? I don't know. I have no complaints about my players. That is for sure. The result could be different. Yeah, could be different. Could be, could be three one. Could be two two. Could be different. But uh, difficult for my players to do better than what they did. So I think, uh, I think that the only thing that I can say, with what we have at the moment, with the power that we have, or we don't have with the situation that we live in this moment, which is uh, almost unique. It's very difficult to do better, especially when the opponent scores before us. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. If they press us high, they know that if we go long, we don't win one single ball against the opponent's defenders. If they, they drop the block and they defend it with a low block, they know that it's very difficult for us to get into that box, especially from from the sides. So opponents, they, they know. If they score a goal before us, we are in trouble. So proud of the boys. They fought until the last second for the, for the result. And I cannot ask more from them, especially people like Lucas, Celso, Bergwin, these boys that are playing every minute and trying to do miracles in positions that are not their positions. I, I cannot complain. Uh, again, I repeat, and I think I'm going to be repetitive. I would love to be on the 1st of July. I would love to be in pre-season. I would love to be working with, with Harry Kane, with Sissoko, with Sonny. But that's not possible. And we have three long months to go in three competitions where we are still it's going to be three long months for us but i think these boys will learn a lot from that they will they will learn about resilience they will learn about uh, effort they will learn about going in the limits so i think a very difficult experience for the boys but a good experience for the future but bearing in mind your limited resources do you stand by your decision to keep to drop Deli Ali and not bring him on until the last 15 minutes? Yeah, uh, because we knew that tactically it was very important for us to play in, the, in a certain way. And it was also very important for us to try to try with fast people when they were fresh. Uh, fresh. Fresh, so so. Because thanks to, to the choices of, uh, of the TV broadcasters it's difficult to speak about freshness when we play Aston Villa two days before uh, Leipzig and uh, Chelsea two days at 12.30 after after Leipzig but we have we have strange game plans but we need to have them because there is not another way when you see for example while Amela while Amela played so well and played only for 20 minutes, you must think that I am an idiot. You know, he was even in the warm-up and even in the warm-up on the pitch, he was in communication with me about his feelings. Can I go or no? That guy that played so well for the last 20 minutes in the warm-up, he was in communication with me because he was not sure that he could go. That's Lamela. Amazing guy, fantastic player, and trying to help the, the team. So we start the game thinking that, okay, Lucas and, and Bergwin, they are still more or less fresh, and let's try. We tried, we didn't score. Uh, Caballero made a, a, great, a great save. We know that we cannot create lots of chances. Then, in the last part of the game, what's the plan? Okay, the plan is we bring Lamela, if he can, then we bring Dele. We don't have a presence in, in the box. The opponent is going to be with a low block like they were. Let's try a little bit with Dele. We are trying to, to do things. So very difficult for us. I'm going to be always repetitive. Nothing, nothing at all to criticize 
my players. Nothing at all. Exactly the opposite. Got to change me. Jose, are you aware of the situation regarding Giovanni Lo Celso's challenge on Aspel Cuesta? The referee didn't award a red. VAR didn't think it was a red. Stockley Park then subsequently said it was a red card. You know, I hope I hope the noise is uh, the same noise of when uh, the VAR kills us. I hope the noise is exactly the same. I hope the noise is exactly the same against Liverpool when Robertson should get the red card and didn't, against Watford when Capue mm -hmm. should get the, the red card twice with this gentleman, the same gentleman here, uh, Michael Oliver. Uh, I hope that the noise is the same noise. That's what I think. But for Stoney Park to turn around and say someone's made a mistake here, how do you think that makes sense? But why they didn't say when they made the mistake against Liverpool and against Watford? That's what I mean by, by, by the same noise. That's what I mean by the same noise. So in this, case, is there a, in this case, should the referee go over and look at the pitch line monitor? That's what's there. Uh, that's not my problem. OK, let's go to David and one more after this. James David. Um, you make it, talking about all the problems, your many, many problems, you, you almost make it sound like the, ra the last three months of the season are almost beyond very you. Very difficult. But they're beyond you. It's, it's impossible. The next three months are going to be very difficult. Uh, I know that maybe in, uh, in three weeks, Three, four weeks, Sissoko is back and is not a striker, but is, is, is another solution for us. I, I hope that by April, uh, or Sonny or Harry, one of them makes a, a fantastic recovery like Hugo Lloris did, because Hugo come to play a couple of weeks before the expected time. Nobody was expecting him to come so early and he did come. So with the effort of the players, with the effort of the medical people, with the effort of the sports science people that works with the injured players, let's hope that is not until the end of the season. Let's hope it is, like Simon says, not months, weeks. And, you know, I hope that uh, in May, I think we play three Premier League matches. Uh, I hope in May, maybe we have them all. But we are speaking about the last, the last three. It's going to be very difficult. And especially when we go into accumulation of matches, we don't even have match players to rotate the other ones. And that's the, the big problem for us. You know, you just look to Chelsea. Played the striker of the world champions. On the bench was the striker, or after Harry Kane, the second striker of the England national team. And in the, in the stands, the second striker of Belgium, national team. We have zero strikers on the pitch, zero strikers on the bench, and zero strikers in the stands. We have two in the hospital. <laughs> and that's, that's the situation. You know, it's an incredible, incredible negative uh, uh, situation. And again, I say, I'm very proud of, of, of the boys. Um, and I cannot ask more from from them. I'm I'm happy with them. Okay, last one, Ben. Um, I don't know if you're aware, Jesse. Before kick off, um, Frank said he thought either you'd guessed what how they play, or that maybe your connection to the Chelsea training ground has helped no. you to. No, I guess because there is a logic. There is a logic on it. When they have a run of bad results, they go to five. When they have a run of bad results, they go to Alonso. And that's what they did when they played against Lille. That's what they did when they played against us in the, in the first match. And that's what, of course, I knew that they were going to do uh, today again. I think that's something obvious. When they are in a good run of results, they play different players, they play different systems. When they are in trouble, Five in the back, Alonso, and here they go. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, boss. So nobody, nobody leaked me anything. <laughs> they are loyal to him. <laughs> <laughs>